In this video, I'm going to take a look at three different Z890 motherboards from Gigabyte. The Z890 Aorus Elite, the Z890 Aorus Pro Ice, and the Z890 Aorus Master. Now, these motherboards were made for Intel's new Core Ultra processors that are about to launch, and they come with the new LGA 1851 socket that you need for these CPUs. So let's check them out, uh, let's see how they compare to each other and how they compare to the rest of the boards I've covered so far. Let's begin. Like I said in my previous videos, uh, in terms of general upgrades, there is not much to talk about when it comes to this new chipset. The main thing is the fact that the new CPUs will have 24 PCIe lanes instead of 20 on previous generations, so you will be able to run a Gen 5x4 SSD without losing any bandwidth for your GPU like you would have on a Z790 motherboard. Also, Thunderbolt support will now be standard on most boards, and that's it. Now, the lowest tier board that I have here is the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7, but it is still a very complete board. It comes with four M.2 slots, all of them are covered with a heatsink, and all of them are completely tool-free. You get four SATA ports, uh, two internal USB 2 ports, an internal USB 3 connection, and a Type-C connection. There are three addressable RGB headers for RGB heavy builds, and while I would have liked to see eight fan headers, uh, six is still fine for majority of builds, and if you ever need more, you can always use a splitter or two. It also comes with an internal HDMI connection for PC builds that use an extra display in the case or on the case itself. On the VRM side, it comes with 16 80 amp power stages for the CPU. And while I cannot talk about performance just yet, this should be more than enough for even a high-end Core Ultra 9 CPU. It is very interesting that you get both a hex display and simple physical buttons, uh, which are usually only present on higher-end boards, and you get a button to easily release your GPU. On the rear I.O. you get four USB 2 ports, uh, three 5 gigabit USB ports, two 10 gigabit USB ports, one Thunderbolt connection that can be used as a USB 4 port, as well as 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, optical out and Wi-Fi 7 with a new easy click mechanism. Now the next step up is the Z890 Aorus Pro and I have the ICE version here, which means that it has a white silver design and it is such a beautiful motherboard. It even has a white PCB and white plastic around most connections and you can combine it well with various white-ish GPUs and other components on the market. It has all the features that we've seen on the lower positioned Elite board, so you still get the hex display, physical buttons, GPU release button, and the internal HDMI port, but then it adds a couple of features that you didn't get on the Aorus Elite. It comes with an extra M.2 slot, uh, which brings the total to five. They are all heat synced and they are all completely tool free. You get two more fan headers. Uh, the VRMs are slightly better, so you get 1690 amp power stages for the CPU, and it uses a higher quality eight layer PCB compared to a six layer one on the Elite. On the rear I.O. you get an extra USB and Thunderbolt port for a total of 12, and the network port is a 5 gigabit one. You also get a little memory fan kit, uh, so you can cool your memory if you want to, which is not something you usually need to worry about, but it is still a nice little extra. And then we have the Z890 Aorus Master, which is Gigabyte's proper hobby board. On top of what we've seen on the previous two boards, this one will get you an even better power delivery system, so you get 1810 amp power stages just for the CPU. Everything is reinforced and you get even bigger heat sinks on it. It looks great, it is very sturdy and very heavy. Uh, I was just a bit surprised that they didn't do a backplate this time around. It is a regular sized ATX board, uh, even though previous master boards were extended ATX models, but I do think ATX just works better for most cases. It does add extra fan headers, so you get to 10 in total, an extra addressable RGB header for a total of four, and a second USB 3.0 port. Now, I know there aren't many cases with dual USB Type-C's, but I would have liked to see a second Type-C header on 
this model at least. Unlike the Hero, the Master does get a 10 gigabit LAN on the back, which is great, and you get even more USB ports. Uh, 12 USBs in total, plus two Thunderbolt slash uh, USB 4 ports. But in order to see which motherboard makes the most sense to get, uh, we need to look at the prices and what you get when you pay a premium for uh, some of the higher end models. So the Aorus Elite comes at 350 euros, which is quite a lot, but it is also a very complete board and for most builds out there, there is very little reason to spend more than that. It has four M.2 slots, internal Type-C connection, 10 USB ports in the back, Thunderbolt connection and power delivery that should easily handle a Core Ultra 9, uh, which is, again, already more than enough for most people. And it doesn't cheap out on the postcode either, plus it has all the ease of use features like having all storage options tool free, having a GPU release system and some physical buttons. If you were preparing to spend even more on a motherboard, uh, you should definitely ask yourself if there is anything that you really need that this motherboard doesn't have. Compared to the competition that I covered in my previous two videos, the, the MSI Tomahawk and the MSI Pro uh, should cost about the same as the Aorus Elite, and they're actually very similar for most practical purposes. MSI's main advantage is that it has 5 gigabit LAN and an extra Thunderbolt port, uh, while Gigabyte, on the other hand, adds some physical buttons and has all their M.2 slots completely tool-free. The Tough Gaming from ASUS uh, costs more and has less USB ports and no hex display, so the Elite is in a better spot, in my opinion. The Aorus Pro Ice should launch at around 430 euros, so about 80 euros more than the Elite, uh, which isn't that much more if you really like the way the Pro Ice looks, but do remember that the Aorus Elite will also launch with a white Ice version that will cost you less. So. Unlike with the last generation of motherboards, uh, the Aorus Pro really needs to somehow justify its higher price a bit more. Now, it does get you an extra M.2 slot, a, a higher quality PCB, a slightly improved VRMs, and 5 gigabit LAN, plus a couple of extra ports on the back, so you're definitely getting quite a few extras for your money. But the Aorus Master will launch at 650 euros, so almost double the price of the Elite and about 50% more than the Aorus Pro. Again, the Master does add some value, like uh, even better VRMs, which is nice if you're serious about overclocking, for example. It adds a couple of extra USB options and a 10 gigabit LAN, which is great, but there are also much cheaper ways to get some extra USB ports or to get faster LAN. Still, it should be a lot cheaper than the MSI ACE, which does add the backplate and a bit better power delivery, and it is cheaper than the Hero that adds a backplate and an extra Type-C header, but has fewer USB ports on the back and only has 5 gigabit LAN for some reason. So in this segment, the master does feel just a little bit more reasonable, in my opinion. I just think that for the price premium or the cheaper Aorus boards, every little feature would help to justify the price, like adding the second type C header, for example. Anyway, uh, I think this is all I have to say about these uh, gigabyte boards for now, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end. Uh, if you were set on the Gigabyte motherboard, I hope this video was at least helpful a bit. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more content like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!